Okay, we're all set. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the whole thing about my talk is basically every, a lot of people see my laptop and my desktop and how things are set up and say, how did you do that? How do I make things look that way? So this whole talk is basically how I made my laptop look the way it does. Tremendous amount of waste of time. I'm actually like compiling Gen 2 endlessly. But um, I like my desktop to look pretty. Um, what we're going to cover, terminal. Uh, various things on the desktop, how to use and create your own applets, which is a lot easier than you'd think. Um, terminals, the three that I like as far as cosmetically, A term, E term, and console. The reason I like those three is they do pseudo transparency, which I happen to like a lot, which is these, you know, fake transparent terms. They just take the background they grab a chunk of it, throw it in the background of the term. If you throw anything behind that term, you don't see it. It's not really transparent. It just pretends like it is. Um, they they vary in their features. Ah, that's what I covered. Um, so, uh, console and E term do a lot more than A term does. A term is really basic, and it's actually the one that I'm running now because the only feature out of all those that I actually like to use a lot is the pseudo transparency um, and they all it's um, it's easy to get them all to hide a lot of the extra decorations that's a term kind of fuzzy out of resolution that is a much better picture of it uh, e term e term has a lot of features in there it's got its own set of custom backgrounds it's got a thing called I believe porthole where you can basically as you move it around the desktop, the background that is in it changes based on an it, it's, it's like it's doing the pseudo transparency with an image that's not actually on your desktop. So as you move your terminal around, the image changes in relation to where the terminal's at, but it's not actually your background. Um, I, I don't use that. I don't use a lot of it. I mean, it's neat that it's there, but I just don't think it's that aesthetically pleasing for the most part. Console can be very pretty. Um, when I'm in KDE, I always run console. And this, this makes the most sense. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to run it when you're not in KDE. So that's why I don't run it in Fluxbox. It does the same stuff I like to do with A term and with E term. Um, it's also easy to hide all of the window decorations in KDE, which is what you have there, and which is what I have with these over here. As far as where to get um, good wallpaper, themes, icon sets for the different desktops, these are the three sites that I recommend. Um, basically, everything I have came from one of these three sites if I didn't make it myself. Um, and, and again, just because it says KD look or GNOME look, a lot of it's wallpaper. Wallpaper, for one, is going to work on the other. I mean, it's just wallpaper, um, much like it's going to work in Fluxbox. A lot of the icons and things. You know, even though they're intended for KD or GNOME, you can use them in Flexbox, you can use them one of the others. You know, it's, these aren't complicated things. It's not like you're necessarily bound by they intended it for KDE. The, the window manager I prefer the most is Flexbox. There's a few issues with it. One of them is it doesn't have the ability to set its own background. So, all the stuff that comes with Fluxbox by default is really, I should say it doesn't have the ability to set its own background. It can't set its own wallpaper. It can do just like a solid color. So all the default stuff is really boring. It's just like flat black, flat blue, nothing really exciting. To get it to set actual wallpaper, you have to install something else that can do that. Um, e set root is part of eTerm. There's, I believe, H set root. There's um, a few other things out there. Either, of either E set root or H set root will do what you need, which is let Fluxbox set a background. It's got a tool called FB set BG 
flex blocks, set background. Um, all it does is looks around and sees, is there anything out there they can actually set wallpaper? And if there is, cool, I'll let you set wallpaper. Um, so you can use that command and, and it abstracts that away, but um, it doesn't do anything on its own. Uh, if you're running KDE, you're running GNOME, obviously it can set wallpaper on its own. That is my f what my desktop generally looks like. There's a lot going on. Um, random wallpaper I pulled off of uh, DVNR, I think. Um, bunch of transparent A terms. Um, transparent and with the window decorations turned off, which is a nice thing in Fluxbox. And I don't actually, I didn't put a slide in here for that. If you, if you're using Fluxbox, all your configs are in .fluxbox and there is a file in there called keys. What you want to do if you want to change your window decorations, there is an entry in here. You'll notice mod1 F12. Mod1 by default is almost always going to be your alt key. And you notice all, all the entries in here for the most part are using mod1. Um, it's not necessarily the case and you can map it to whatever you want, but it's probably going to be alt. So what I'm doing here, I'm saying if you hit alt and F12, toggle decor. And toggle decor means that. Taking you know, the title bar, the little border. There's not much in this theme I have, but the little bit of border there is, that all goes away. In the background, I've got a little thing called Rutail running, which is an utter total waste of time. Um, you could do the same thing with um, tail-f. This just is prettier. Um, you know, e either way does this it accomplishes the same thing. Running your logs and on, on the back of your screen, if there's things you like to monitor. Most of what I monitor really isn't that important anyways, but I just like knowing what's going on in my laptop. Um, root tail, it's root hyphen tail. There's a few different versions. They all do the same thing. Um, very simple to compile. Um, or just take one of these terminals and run it fully transparent and run tail dash f in it with the logs. It'll look the same, just without the color. You know, same same results really. Uh, what I also have here, uh, another thing a lot of people ask me about the, um, the G Corellum that I run to monitor things on the left hand side here. That's a theme called Clear Elum, and um, it it does what it sounds like. It just provides a clear theme for G Corellum. It looks a lot better than the ones that come with it. A lot of people don't bother to skin or to get themes or anything for G Corellum. It's really ugly if you don't. So, you know, I have, you know, it, it can look um, a lot different than it actually does by default. The Clear Elum has a diff few different colors. So, a lot of people don't know that G Corellum can actually not look like utter crap. Um, another neat thing about it, there's actual modules you can get for G Corellum. Um, that looks kind of ugly. Back then you loaded. It, it has its own plugins, basically. You can have plugins that go into G Corellum that let you run XMMS from it, that let you um, view your Wi-Fi status, things like that. And those can, those can come in handy. It's, it's really full feature, just a lot of people don't necessarily take advantage of that. Um, Fluxbox icons. This is another thing a lot of people don't know about. Um, the themes don't use it by default, but Fluxbox can stick icons in the menus. And that's a little screenshot of that. There, I, there are scripts out there that will do this for you, notably uh, Gen 2. Uh, Gen 2 has something that will generate your uh, Fluxbox menu for you, generate icons and all that stuff. Um, I just don't really trust tools like that to know what programs I want in my menu. So I you know, do it myself. If you if you want to add these to your menu yourself, that is, again, in the .fluxbox directory, there is um, a menu entry. And you add a line like this. And I'll actually, that's a lot easier to read. Probably I can bring up, OK. And then you'll notice uh, you know, all these entries where you see, um, where you see icons. You see that first entry, E term. And actually, it's kind of run on. That's the Firefox line. The second line there, Firefox. Little Firefox logo. 
And then you see the second line there. At the very end, there's a path to where the icon is at. I don't recall there being a whole lot of restrictions on the icons. I think they might have had to be uh, 256 colors at the most. They've got to be XPM files. And I've stolen icons out of lots of other um, uh, desktop environments and window managers. Things were, were met for KD or GNOME or XFC or whatever. They will work just fine in Fluxbox. They're just, um, you know, they're going to be smaller. Um, you don't, you know, great big icons aren't going to fit into that menu. Uh, desktop epaulets. This is another really cool thing. Um, there are lots of things like this out there. Um, you got doc apps, super Karamba themes, G desklets, A desklets. They are all basically different ways of doing the same thing. The Windowmaker doc apps are what I have running on the top of Gcrelum there. Gcrelum actually runs in Fluxbox. It has a thing called the slit, which is kind of a legacy thing they took out of Windowmaker. Um, that's this whole bar that I've got on the left side of the screen. You can move it around. Um, you dock things in it. I've docked Gcrelum in it. Um, and then these dock apps, that's where they get their name. They are docked into the bar on the side of the screen. The top one there, that tells me about the status of my wireless, which apparently I've got, I'm not associated with anything. The little bar at the bottom is a signal. The right above it is my MAC address. Very handy. Rather than bothering to run ifconfig or some or iwconfig, I can just look and I can see what my IP is, what my gateway is, all that good stuff. And then just below it, this uh, it tells me the weather. You click on it, and it'll tell me more specifically what the weather is. Yes, it looks very ghetto. It looks you know like old old stuff, um, but it works well in Fluxbox and it works well in Windowmaker. Anything that uses a slit where you can put dock apps in it. Um, the thing about doc apps, if you're interested in doing this, writing your own, they really suck to write. Um, I never actually bothered to do it because when I looked into it, I saw I'd have to write a few hundred lines of C just to have boilerplate to you know, make anything on the screen. If you're a programmer, that's probably trivial. I'm not, so I would rather do something a lot easier, which ended up being super caramba. Um, so I mean, your mileage may vary. If, you're not a it's, if you are a programmer, you might like these a lot. And they are lightweight, and they work really well in lightweight window managers, like Windowmaker, Blackbox, Flexbox, Lightman, anything that supports Windowmaker applets. And, and docapps.org is really, really full of lots and lots of docapps that will do pretty much anything you can think of. A-desklets, like most of the other um, uh, desktop applets, they're written in Python. A-desklets use um, imlib2, which is used by eTerm and eSetRoot. So if you already have eTerm on your system, you're already using this library, so it's not a new dependency for you. Um, they're also relatively lightweight. Um, that's one of the things they're aiming for, is something that is very lightweight. Um, the problem with these, there's not really that many of them. It seems really interesting, neat stuff, but you know, if there's not one that does what I want, it's not that cool for me, unless I want to write my own. GDesklets, on the other end, there's a ton of. They, um, they were targeted for GNOME, obviously, for the name, but they're really pretty platform neutral. There's, you don't have to run them in GNOME. Um, there's no heavy dependencies there, and they are also uh, written in Python. And that URL was on a couple sites back. At, it's like gdesklets.org, I think. The Super Karama themes were the ones that were the most attractive to me because I do run KD on my desktop, which already has all the libraries for this loaded. And there's a ton of these out there on, uh, on kdelook.org and on, the, on Super Karamba's own website. They're written in Python, and they're really, really easy to create your own, which is what I wanted to do. Um, I looked at all these, and I found that basically this was really easy. I, I wrote a theme in like 20 lines of code, and I wouldn't even really call it code. That's kind of a stretch, um, as opposed to you know, two or 300 lines of C for a doc app. That is all of the code I uncommented for the theme that I have running on my desktop. 
This is not doing a whole lot since I don't have a net connection, but uh, this basically shows me the last thing that changed in Slackware current, and it shows me the recent changes. It also could be looking a lot prettier. You can make these, um, you can have these be transparent. In fact, there should be some other Super Karamba themes out here. No. And again, I'm really not much of a coder, but I was able to throw together a Super Karamba theme very easily. Um, basically, it just parses a bunch of, it, it calls a bunch of uh, basic shell scripting stuff, um, shell commands. You know, things like cut, um, things like grep, it calls <laughs> links, very, very simple stuff. Um, if you know a little bit about using a Unix machine, you, you could throw one together very trivially. I'm looking for which one of these looks really cool. Now oh, this is kind of neat. Assuming it loads. Uh, one thing I will say about these Grama themes, they are a lot more reliable in KDE than in Fluxbox. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to run one in Fluxbox. I basically am because I'm stubborn and it was easy to throw together. In KDE, they make a lot of sense. In other, other desktops, not quite as much. To, to explain what's going on kind of in the theme, you know, with a few more comments, basically this is just saying, uh, setting the background, telling us the size of the Karamba theme. Setting the shadow, because it's got a shadow as well. What font to use, font size, color of the font. I mean, really fairly intuitive stuff. This prints the line. You see the very next line. Slackware current, last change. Slackware current, last change. It just prints that text, prints it in that color, prints it with a shadow. You know, pretty basic. Grabs the data last change, it just runs links, dumps out the um, Slackware change log, which is a text file, and um, you know, grabs the top of it. And then uh, prints that next line, recent changes. Grabs the names of the last five packages that are changed. Again, really basic, um, just command line scripting. Um, grabs that same file, grabs through it, and gives me the last five changes. And then the last thing that it does, it creates the ability for me to click on that. And we had it. If we were actually online, that would pull up. Yeah. It would pull up the whole change log in a little window there. OK, there we go. And then you can see the little doc app on the left now pops up. I've got an IP. I've got an app mask. I've got a gateway. You know, all that good stuff. And then this thing is going to go ahead and try to grab that. And it's going to pop up in little red text with the last change and with the recent changes. Uh, yeah, this is basically, it's calling uh, part of KD is a thing called key dialog. And it's basically a, a really simple way to throw up a text box, or a few different kinds of boxes. In this case, KDI like text box. Throwing that up with the change log that we've just grabbed and telling it size 600 by 500. Um, and again, uh, this is probably not even the, the most optimal way to do a Super Karamba theme, but it works, and it was really easy. I'm calling stuff I already knew how to use. I'm calling shell commands. I'm calling a KDE dialog command. Um, I didn't have to really know much about Super Karamba to do that. And that's one of the things I really liked about it. That there's a screenshot of what it looks like when it's running. Uh, it's same, pretty much what you're looking at, except there's a little red text with the last changes, date of the last change, and the last few packages that have changed.
Yeah, it's trying to bring this up. So part, part of the point about that, and, and one of the things I like about the, this desktop, you can, there's a lot of things like that you can do to improve your own experience. Um, in my case, I didn't see anything that did what I wanted, which was you know sit on my desktop and tell me when packages and Slack were changed. There we go. That's see, and it pops a little K dialog, Slack were changed log. It was very, really, it was very, very trivial for me to just throw something together. And okay, well now I know if there's something that it's similar that you want to do. It's very easy to make that happen. Uh, it's a very powerful thing about these tools. Um, Yeah, so very similar, it's just a text file popping up. And that's pretty much it for the slides. Um, things I don't have on the slides there. This is my Fluxbox desktop. On my machine at home, I run KDE. Uh, KDE is really, 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 really themable, um, as opposed to Fluxbox, where I'm kind of, you know, putting a few different small things together. Um, I'm not going into as much detail on that because it's really, really intuitive. On that kdlook.org website, there are lists of, they separate things up. You have full desktop themes. You have just like mouse themes, um, just wallpaper, things like that. They are, um, there'll be tarballs that you download. You download those tarballs. And in KDE's desktop control panel, you just basically point and click, give it the path to that, and it will install that theme. And you can switch over to that theme It'll change the look of everything on the desktop. Um, one of the things that's really nice in KD is um, a set of icons called Umicons. They're the most cracked out, weird icons you'll ever see. They, um, he has like robotic monkeys and uh, panda bears and rolls of toilet paper. And it's really, really bizarre. I'll see if I have, uh, have those on here. They, um, they're hands down the coolest looking thing I've ever found uh, for Linux. Now oh, these are kind of hard to see. There we go. These are Umicons. These are really, really cool. Uh, these are up on kdulook.org. Um, and, and these are usable in other things. These, um, these will, in this case, these are all PNGs. Um, KDE is using PNGs. These will not work for the Fluxbox menu, but they will work, well, they'll work for anything that will take a PNG. And they're just, they're very unique. Um, a lot of these things don't match up with any particular application. He just felt like, well, loaf of bread. You should have a loaf of bread. I'm sure there's something you can do with that. I have no idea what this guy's thought process is, but there's an uh, insane number of these, and a lot of them are just very, very strange. Um, these combined with, with a nice theme off, off KDE look will make your KDE desktop look a lot better than the defaults with um, the kind of boring wallpaper, and, and I believe they use the crystal icons by default. These are much better. Um, I think that covers most of what I can think of as far as um, what I had in mind to discuss. I'm sure there are questions. Anyone? Gal? Can you do uh, animated backgrounds for your wallpaper? Uh, KDE supports um, some animated backgrounds. As, as I don't know of any way to do it in Flexbox trivially. If there's probably a tool somebody's written that does it, um, KDE can do the same kind of stuff like you can do in Windows, where you can have like internet content. It, it's it's basically they've implemented their own version of Active Desktop. You can have content off the internet in there. Um, I believe it'll pull in TV channels. Um, oh, the other cool thing you can do in KDE is desktop. It doesn't just you can take any arbitrary static. Uh, wallpaper and throw it up there, but you can apply things on top of that. For example, let's say I want a gradient, so the left-hand side of my screen is a little lighter and the right-hand screen is a little darker, and I can actually have a, a KD throw a gradient on top of my background and do that so that maybe some, something that I run on the right-hand of the screen is a little more visible just in that area, rather than actually have to take it into the GIMP and edit it and have you know, that image 
hard set to being, you know, however you thought you wanted right that minute, KD just does it on the fly. And it has a lot of little options to do gradients, uh, uh, to apply different colors on top of the wallpaper that's there. Uh, lots of really cool stuff. David. I can't remember. I don't know if it was somebody that was running this on a Mac or not, but they had a camera that was built into their, uh, their uh, machine. And they basically would point the camera in the opposite direction of, the, of their screen. And that would actually form the background. And it would actually move. Oh. If people walked behind it, I mean, you'd basically be looking at the screen and seeing what's behind it. Did you see a video of this or a photograph of this? It was a, a video. OK. Because I, 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 there's a photograph trick that does that that I'm thinking of. A video I haven't seen. That's pretty cool. Well, it's actually like a, it's like a live desktop. I can't remember where it was. Because what? San Francisco. OK. Because uh, what a lot of people have done posting on the internet and claiming to be something like that is they take their digital camera and they take a picture of what's behind their laptop and make that their desktop. And even go to the lengths of, you know, they've got cables and things that are around it, lining things up so basically they take a picture of what's behind it, make it their desktop, and then take a picture from over here of the whole thing so it, it looks like you're seeing right through the uh, right through it. It sounds like what you're talking about is taking a camera and doing the same thing, right. except having it actually be live and actually, cool. Yeah, live. It would, you know, there's a little bit of delay, but it would be, you know, it looked like pretty cool. Yeah, that I haven't seen. That does sound pretty cool. It's kind of wild. I mean, they, we're, we're, we're a little bit ways off from actually having screens yeah. that don't have a physical yeah. mass or laser face or something like that. So that was it, kind of the next That'd be a cool and way to give yourself an office window. Yeah. And, and again, I mean, if you're running a, you know, live video as your desktop, you know, 24 hours a day, that's probably about the least efficient thing you could do as far as productivity, but it looks cool. <laughs> so that's... I, well, most of this stuff isn't about efficiency. It's about right. looking good. Right. <laughs> exactly. And uh, I mean, there's... The, the desktop I'm running here is fairly bare, but still, I think, looking decent. Everything I run in KDE tends to be much more on the stupidly bloated side. You know, I'll, I'll sometimes run a half dozen different Super Caramba themes that are all over the desktop, and I run dual monitors, so the right monitor might be almost entirely Super Caramba themes underneath. It's really kind of silly, but people come over and they look and like, wow, that looks really cool. And okay, my job is, was done then. Uh, anyone else? What, uh, what's the best? I, I mean, I'm a text guy. I hate GUIs totally. I mean, my, my, you know, it, my world, I exist in probably about 50 tab windows inside of a, an X term or in, in terms of uh, your CRT windows. Uh, and that's kind of how my world exists. But uh, as far as uh, one of the things I used to like about KDE when I was running KDE, this was many years back, was the ability to uh, do so many different uh, keyboard commands. I mean, I'm a, mm -hmm. I hate one. I don't, don't want to use a mouse or actually a window man. Window, window managers for me get the way. But actually having, what's the best desktop out there that has really good keyboard navigation? Screen. Um, there, yeah, rat, there's a couple that are designed to not, Rat Poison is one. Rat Poison is a, is a really, really basic screen manager, or a window manager that is designed to have everything done through keyboard shortcuts. Um, there's a couple other basic ones, like TWM and I think PWM um, are also really basic in that regard, but Rat Poison, I think, is the hands down most keyboard centric uh, window manager in that regard. They, yeah. <laughs> it's not that different from screen, really, when you're running, you know, split screens and everything. It's just you can view images I mean, if you need to. You reminded me of something too that I forgot to mention. Um, console does tabs really nicely when you have a lot of terminals. What a lot of people don't know in Fluxbox, and you can do this with. A, any window that you've got in Fluxbox, you can do this with. I tend to just do it with the terminals. You can take your two terminals. If you middle click on the title here, you see I'm just dragging the title around now. I drop that into here. I now have both of these basically tabbed. What I can also do, I've got Conquer over here. Well, it's also just another window. I can drop that into Fluxbox, and now all three of these 
are being managed in one little block. They're grouped together. You can set Fluxbox to boot up and group things like this automatically when it starts up. Um, I only really see a use for this for me in managing terminals, but then I'm mostly using Fluxbox to manage terminals. But I mean, there's a lot of potential for that in ways you could apply it. It's, you know, I'm sure there's other people that have lots of uses for this to join random other things together. Maybe you're doing image editing and you could have you know, a file manager in one window, uh, be running the GIMP in another, and have them all as part of the same thing. That maybe perhaps that would be useful to somebody. And then you can drag it right about, back out again with, uh, with another middle click. So that's, that's another pretty neat thing about Flexbox that uh, uh, you know, a lot of people use. And just, you, know, you don't know these things are there. You know, it's not something I need to do my everyday work. But once you know it's there, it's helpful. Um, anyone else? Looking glass? Right. Stuff like that. You know, rotate out. There's all sorts of things that I've seen. Like I know on the Macs you've got the OSX. With OSX you can do something that rotates the screens out and gives you virtual desktops. The thing that comes to my mind mostly is, is the looking glass project. It's, it's like a 3D desktop and you can like take the, the windows and you can you can spin them around in 3D. Um, and, you know, and destroy your graphics card, you know, in the process. But again, it's it's one of those. They they claim it's something that will make you more efficient because you can move things around in 3D. Mostly, it's ooh pretty, which is cool too. But I, I don't know that it really makes you more productive. It's cool to look at though. Um, the Mac may do a much better job of it. Yeah. Is there anything that gives you like a fish eye view, like what focuses on the center part and you kind of flips it around? That's an interesting question. Um, I feel like I've seen stuff that does that, but I can't seem to think anything off the top of my head. Beer does that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I almost want to say Enlightenment might have something like that. Enlightenment's really out there as far as how they do almost everything. I, 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 it's really pretty. It's got a lot of really cool visual effects. I couldn't really seem to get used to using it. But, um, I just felt like <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's got things where like, you can have it like um, do a water effect on the bottom of the screen. So there will be um, like a couple inches up, that's the water line, and it's reflecting what's just above that on what's below. And you see like the shimmering water ripples. Um, it, it's, it's got a lot of these little eye candy things. It, <coughs> it, it, when I used it, it didn't seem to really eat too much, uh, too many resources while I was running that neat stuff. But at the same time, I didn't need water shimmering on my desktop, and the the way it the way it manages things, it's it's not as intuitive as some other things. Um, but I, I feel like it might have had something like what you're talking about. I would say that would be the the one to look at um, of any of these, because I, I don't recall seeing that anywhere else except maybe Enlightenment. Anyone else? Set it up like they have an attacker where it's going around from the tower to tower to view each terminal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think anybody's made a hacker's window manager that I know of. Thank God. There's a uh, window manager Is there? that uses the Doom engine. You can go around through your file system. Well, it's a file manager. Files yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah, it's. it's yeah. Yeah. The the other problem with that is if you remember from Doom, um, monsters in Doom will every now and then attack each other. So even if you're not killing processes, they'll eat each other every now and then. <laughs> it's like kind of like process Darwinism. Um, yeah, that's 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 a really cool hack. I'm trying to remember what the name of that's called. Uh, uh, P. I haven't seen that. PS Doom. Yeah, PS Doom. Yeah, PS Doom. Um, there, there's another file manager that somebody wrote where it's it's similar to that, but um, it's it's like a spatial kind of file manager. You go around with a shotgun, not not Doom, just like a whole new thing you made where you go around with a shotgun and and kill processes. And or I'm not sorry, no, that manages processes. His manages files. That's what it was. You go around and instead of just you know RMing a file, well you open this up and you take out a shotgun and and you destroy it. And that's how you get rid of your file. 
So that that's pretty cool. If if I remember right, they had s <laughs> as as far as I know that never ever existed in real life. They had a graphics department that created that, and um, I don't think it even actually ran on those machines they were using. I think they, I want to say they they edited that in later, but I I could be wrong on that. But I know that. It's yeah, I know they were Max. It's been so long since I've seen that movie, but yeah, I, I, no, nothing actually like was running like what they had. Uh, also, Imperium wanted to know if the new Clam A B comes with flu shots for rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Any non-Imperium related questions? <laughs> Definitely non-Imperium related. Me? Yes. Oh, I live here looking happy. Yeah, it's not Imperium related. Um. In eighty has a question for you that he's <laughs> not bad. Yeah, why is illusion so gay? <laughs> <laughs> I was dying to ask. He wants to know what you're doing tonight. But <laughs> that's just he, he was he was too much of a voice to ask and stuff. He's got a big old personal fan. Alright. So I, I I guess that covers the uh <laughs> <laughs> That was SGI stuff, I believe, actually, in, in Jurassic Park. Thing going on there. I, I don't know if it was that SGI? Yeah, what was that for uh, Jurassic Park? That's what he was asking, yeah. Well, what, was, what was Trinity using in uh, the Matrix when she. Uh, NMAP. NMAP? <laughs> See? She was using a CLI. What the hell do you need these GUIs for? Yeah. It, oh, like web browsers and, you know. <laughs> what's the web? Prawn. You need a GUI for prawn. There's no, more, prawn. no better reason than prawn. Text prawn, yeah. Text prawn works. Oh, that reminded me of another random thing that's not really, <laughs> not really desktop stuff. It's just cool. Uh, that. There's there's something totally useless for you. Cockalip. I like cockalip. Absolutely. Using a GUI for that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm running. I'm running. I'm using a GUI to run text flames. Can you like put some logs in it and like? No. What about the so you can start that. Open, start that. Overclock your laptop. And you have a little fire going in the winter. You can put your hands out. Gene Marshmallow. Set that as your background and have it read the output from your uh, work job, Gene Crow. Because then the output from program changes the flame. <laughs> Oh, these are just randomly generated flames. It's just a simple little script. No, this is just a stupid little demo that shows you what Kaka Lib could do. That's all. Or Lib Kaka. I can show you Nauticon through it. But yeah, we Yeah, it works well for. If I still have Nauticon, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's last year's Nauticon. That's a video, a DVD through text? Yes. And that would be cause. That is Libcaca. Lib well, it's what I'm actually using. M Player has, um, yes. Go to their web page. Their logo is a little piece of poop. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> and you. It, um, you can patch SDL with support for this, so anything that can use SDL can theoretically, anything used SDL can theoretically be run through this. So he has screenshots of Doom in this. 
Um, but it's not playable apparently. But he, you know, you can run it and, and look at it. This I think we have to have on the big screen. We've had it on the big screen. Oh, you mean you know, High Linux Fest? <laughs> we um we were running video through this thing um night last night or the night before last. But fun little toy, totally completely silly and useless, but um neat. But any any other questions about anything? Okay, cool. You have one Imperium? Is it about somebody being gay? Oh my god. Oh you just he's waving tickets. Okay, I think that's it. Can you uh, hey they they have a rope thirteen plugin for that? <laughs> I don't I'll get on writing that. I don't like people to I don't like people to, you know, view my video and understand what it is. Right. <laughs> I would be great to use that to actually display like program program text. <laughs> the actual code. Yeah. <laughs> Take a video of